The 6th of January 2022 marks the 52nd anniversary of the death of my grandfather, PJ Ward, known also as Joe Ward. Over Christmas, I was down in Kitty Begg's graveyard, ensuring the grave he shares with 17 others was in good order. It was by far the best workout I had over the holiday period, taking two visits to put right no less. Besides the 6th, the 7th of January also marks a significant milestone in the life of my grandfather, being the centenary of the speech he delivered to the doll prior to the vote on the treaty. He clearly did not like the treaty and voted for it under protest. Over Christmas 1921, he had listened carefully to his constituents since it was signed, and he had looked at the real politic of the situation and what would happen with Lloyd George if the treaty were rejected. It was a stepping stone in his mind, and he was happy to continue the fight for independence if required. In concluding his speech, he said, We have to swallow a bitter pill in this, and nobody likes to swallow pills, but if we honestly think that this is for the best interests of our country, I think we are doing then what our conscience directs. And in taking this step, I consider I am doing what is best for my country. Joe had just turned 30 when the plenipotentiaries were still in London. The decision he faced the following January was a heavy burden for anyone to carry, but his thinking was pragmatic, thorough, and with a well-integrated sense of what his constituents actually wanted. Academics may argue that demographics, as well as the terrain, ensure Donegal was never going to be part of a newly formed Northern Ireland, but then the same argument could be made for the lost counties of Tyrone and Fermanagh. Anyone looking at a map could see how much tidier it would have been to simply go the three and a half miles west of Fermanagh to the Atlantic coast and have a seven county, Northern Ireland. That was never going to happen in Donegal, but such a well-organised resistance led by my grandfather and others. Catching breath between my epic gardening over Christmas, I thought how closely run that treaty vote was. A swing by four votes would have changed the result of the treaty debates. Joe Ward made the last substantive speech from a backbencher before the vote was taken. I may be biased, but looking at the treaty debates and those who chose not to articulate their thinking for the record, I'm pretty sure there were more than four deputies seeking a well-crafted thought process to help them make up their minds. From the grave, I looked out over Donegal Bay and thought it was hard to believe that from this picturesque, peaceful site lay a man who helped shape the country's future. The wonder was in looking at the normality around me. The consequence of profound events manifest themselves not through ostentation, but in the mundane minutiae. The speed signs down the road were in kilometres. The thickness of the road markings were thinner, and the backplates of the cars were not yellow. This is Donegal, its relentless soft drizzle being the final soggy confirmation. As of the 3rd of May 1921, it became detached from its Ulster neighbours and in turn was incorporated into the Free State and then the Republic of Ireland, but always reserved its own special character. Nestled between a kingdom it was never going to remain part of, and a wild Atlantic Ocean, with just that three and a half miles to connect it to the country it is a key part of, it is, to use my old Donegal app strapline, more than a county. It is a state of mind, body and soul. Forget the forgotten county title that some locals still chant, for no one who has been to Donegal will ever forget it, be it the countless Nordies seeking regular refuge, or those in search of a rugged beauty and a warm welcome, for we are our own people. It's something our ancestors fought hard to have, and on this day, and the next, Grandad, your words and deeds in helping shape it are not forgotten. <laughs>